There are so many hidden gems and powerful tools across the Microsoft 365 suite that I just wish everybody knew about to make sure that they're getting the most out of their subscription. PowerPoint is one of my most used apps, and that's probably because I use it for a whole bunch of stuff that's not just presentations. Maybe there's even some things that you've specifically purchased another app for, not realizing that there are things in PowerPoint that might be able to do it for you. I always love finding new ways to be more efficient on navigating a program and more impact to a presentation, or just finding quick new ways to get things done. So today, we're gonna to take a look at my personal top five favorite PowerPoint features that you might not know about. First of all, we're gonna talk about resizing slides. Like I say, I use PowerPoint for all kinds of things and the ability to change the slide size really is my secret to this success. I made my wedding invitations, my CV, social media posts, and countless one pages and infographics all within PowerPoint. And because they're an A4 size or a square, people always ask me how I made them, assuming that it's through a designer or at the very least using professional design software. To change the size of a slide, select the design tab of the toolbar ribbon. Then head to the far right and select the slide size icon. You can select sanded, which is a four by three aspect ratio, or widescreen, which is 16 by nine like most of these. But where the magic comes in for me is custom slide size. Custom slide sizes can be set in inches, centimeters, or pixels, which is really useful for creating image sizes and banners for things like social media, or getting documents to the perfect print size. Let's use my wedding invitations as an example. My husband Graham is Scottish, and for our invitations, we started by using the Bell of the Borders tartan as the inspiration for our overall design. I changed the custom slide size to make the invitations a square size to match the tartan image we had. Then I started layering on top with text boxes and icons to add that little bit of extra pizzazz. Adding all of these different sections and layers on PowerPoint is actually really easy, and I like that it automatically comes up with guidelines to line up the icons and text boxes. And then, once they're all aligned, I can select everything at once by dragging over top using my mouse and then pressing Ctrl G to group them together so I can move them around or resize things without messing up all of that time I just spent perfectly lining them up. Number two, remove background and other awesome picture formatting tools. Another powerful design tool that I use all the time in PowerPoint is removing the background of images. This was something that I used to find really painstaking and a super tedious task, and now PowerPoint just mastered the work for me. Simply go to the Insert tab and insert a picture from your device, online, or from PowerPoint's huge array of stock images. Once you've done that, a new tab will appear of picture formatting options, and Remove Background is on the far left of that ribbon. Now, I need to let you know that this does work best where there's a good amount of contrast between the main image you're trying to cut out and the background, but you're easily able to make edits in what you want to keep and what it is that you want to remove. Once you click Remove the Background, this magenta pink layer will appear. This is what PowerPoint is going to remove. If it's not quite right, you can click Mark Areas to Remove or Mark Areas to Keep and adjust it to your liking. You're easily able to do this with your mouse, but I like to zoom in and be a little extra precise and do this with my Surface Slim Pen tip. And while we're in the picture formatting tab, I must shout out some of the extra gems that live in here as well. You can use color correcting templates, change the transparency of an image, add picture styles or effects, add alt text to make your presentation and documents more accessible, arrange, resize, or even compress the image. There are so many powerful image tools right within PowerPoint, which can quickly take your image to the next level so it can better suit how it is that you need to use it. I spend a lot of time in this tab and it's something I just wish everyone knew about. Number three, screen record. There are lots of different ways to record your screen, like pressing Windows G to activate the gain bar, or it's even about to come into the snapping tool in Windows 11. But for many years now, I've been recording my screen in PowerPoint. I use this to do a whole lot of things like step-by-step -step demos or even create tutorials. Go into the Insert tab, then right down the end of the ribbon is Screen Recording. Here, you can select the area that you want to record if you want to include audio or your cursor and then hit Record, and it will give you a three-second countdown. 
This is great for creating how-to guides or even just showcasing your content. To finish your recording, press the Windows Shift and Q buttons all at the same time. You'll then see your screen recording in your PowerPoint, which you can use in a presentation, or you can even save this as a separate media file. All of the short hints and tips videos that you see right here on our YouTube channel, yep, the screen was recorded in PowerPoint. Okay, we've talked about a few ways to use PowerPoint for things other than presentations, add a bit more style and flair to your presentation, or create different styles of documents. And for my last two favorite features, I really want to talk a lot about actually delivering a presentation. Number four, rehearse with coach. Rehearse with coach helps you to prepare in private to give more effective presentations. I'm a presenter for a living, and I have been for many years now, but practicing to no one has always been something that I've found a little bit strange. I start a time on, then I kind of half mumble to myself, I use a lot of hand gestures, and kind of just hope for the best. Rehearsal Coach evaluates your pacing, pitch, your use of filler words, and full speech, euphemisms, culturally sensitive terms, and it even detects when you're being overly wordy or simply reading the text that's already on a slide. After each rehearsal, you get a report that includes statistics and suggestions for improvements. Being aware of these things is always the first step on improving them. And I'm really excited to now have an effective way to practice to make sure my presentations are more consistent, to the point, and most importantly, actually run to time. So how do I do this? The good news is that you can do this in almost every version of PowerPoint, so you can find the way to practice that best works for you. You can open your presentation in PowerPoint for Windows, PowerPoint for Android, PowerPoint for iOS, PowerPoint for Mac OS, and PowerPoint for the web. Let's get started. First of all, open your presentation in PowerPoint for the web. And if you're not signed in already, make sure to sign in using your Microsoft account. On the Slideshow tab, select Rehearse with Coach. If you've turned off the Simplified ribbon and you don't have the Slideshow tab, instead use the View tab and start Rehearse with Coach. The presentation will open in a full screen view, similar to a slideshow. Select Get Started at the lower right when you're ready to begin rehearsing. As you speak, your personal digital coach gives you on-screen guidance in the lower right corner of the window about pacing, inclusive language, use of profanity, so any naughty words, filler words, and whether or not you're just reading the text that's already on the slide. When you're through, exit the full screen view, and the coach will open up a rehearsal report that summarizes what it observes and offers you any recommendations. If you want to take a copy of that report to help track your progress as you practice, make sure to take a screenshot of them. We can often be our own harshest critics, which makes practicing really, really difficult. So practicing with a totally impartial AI has been incredibly useful, and I've already seen, and most importantly, feeling the benefits. If you wanted to prepare for an upcoming presentation but not sure how, I highly recommend giving Rehearse with Coach a try. And last, but certainly not least, number five, record a presentation. Did you forget to hit record on your big presentation in a Teams meeting, or do you just want to master your presentation to keep for later as a future resource? Well, did you know that you could record your PowerPoint presentation, or even just a single slide that captures your voice, app gestures, and your video presence, all within PowerPoint? The completed recording is like any other presentation. You can play it for your audience in slideshow, or you can even export it as a video file. So instead of just handing the deck over to someone, people can see your presentation with all of your passion and all of your personality still intact. The record button is in the very top bar over to the right hand side, and when you select record, the record screen will open, and here you have a few different options to help you present like a pro. You can select which view will help you follow along with your slides the best. Teleprompter view shows all of your notes along with the current slide. This allows you to read your notes while maintaining eye contact with your audience in the recorded video. Presenter view will not only show you what's on your current slide and your notes, but it also gives you a preview of which slide is coming up next. Or you can even just present in slide view, which will give you the best idea of what the final product is going to look like for your audience. You can really easily switch between these views to find the best one for you in the Views drop-down menu, which is in the lower right-hand side. You can even have your camera on while presenting, which I always find more engaging and 
easier to follow along with if you're watching the presentation as a video rather than live. You can even blur your camera background just like you can in Teams to minimize any additional distractions. You can access this option in the Camera Modes drop-down menu, which is also down on that lower right-hand side. When you're done, you can check, edit, and even re-record specific sections rather than having to start all over again. Then, you're able to export it and share it with your audience. PowerPoint is such a powerful application for creating presentations, preparing to wow your audience, create shareable resources, and a whole lot of other things that don't even involve making a presentation at all. I hope that you found this video helpful and hopefully learned something new. Make sure to give us a like and follow for more hints and tips on how to get the most out of your Microsoft 365 subscription, Windows 11 device, and so much more.